what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again today we're going to be taking a quick look at the brand new station PC from Firefly now if you're not familiar with Firefly they mainly make ARM based single board computers and recently they've actually been making some mini ITX boards with ARM based CPUs and in this video we're going to be taking a look at their station PC actually this is their special edition geek explorer station PC and this is utilizing the powerful rock chip 3588. I completely understand that in the past when hearing the name rock chip we kind of turned away when it came to single board computers but they've definitely upped their game with the 3588 and this thing is an absolute beast I mean when it comes to an ARM chip that's not Qualcomm or made by Apple this is definitely a top the line chip when it comes to these mini PCs or single board computers especially when it comes to GPU performance now we're going to be taking a look at some gaming some 4k video playback emulation and overall performance of this mini PC and to do this we're going to be utilizing their new station OS or the station operating system which is based on Android now, if you're interested in seeing Linux running on this, be it Ubuntu or Armbian or something like that, let me know in the comments below and I can get another video made. But today, we're going to be focusing on Station OS. So inside of the box, we do get quite a few accessories. Now, this can actually be loaded up with storage to the hilt. It's got M.2 slots. We can also add SATA drives. So they do send all of the cabling we need to add up to four SATA drives to this mini PC. We've also got our Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth antennas, and in fact, you could actually add a 5G module to this if you want to. They do sell it separately. This one comes with a Bluetooth Air mouse slash remote, and we also get our 12-volt power supply. So this is 12-volt, 7 amps, and we don't need that much just to run the PC. It'll actually run just fine on 2 amps, but if we want to add 4 SATA drives, a 5G module, and some M.2 drives, we will need extra power. So they do include the power supply just in case. As you can see here, this is a fully assembled mini PC, but Firefly does have the option just to pick up the mini ITX board. That way you could add it to your preferred case if you wanted to. It also comes with the IO backplate. And it's actually pretty insane how much they packed onto this board here. So here's a quick rundown. I'm not going to go over everything. But we do have a micro SD card slot here, dual gigabit Ethernet, dual HDMI out, plus we have HDMI or VGA in. That way you could connect an external device to this and record in software on the board itself. It's got a dedicated 10 watt speaker output, a PCIe 3.0 four lane slot. We've got an M.2 slot, which is good for a 4G or a 5G expansion card. We've got another M.2 slot here, which is good for a 2242 M.2 SSD. SATA power out. Four SATA ports here, so we can add up to four SATA drives to this unit, be it 3.5 or 2.5. It really depends on where you're going to mount everything. It's got a built-in microphone, expansion for up to four extra USB 2.0 ports. It does have a DSi 1 and a DSi 2 connector, so you can actually add a display there. It will support touch over it. And uh, power over Ethernet, up to 60 watts on this unit. So yeah, I mean, basically they've packed everything that you could into this unit here. And around back, we've got all of our I.O., USB Type-C, dual HDMI, we've got that VGA, HDMI in, four USB 3.0 ports, all of our audio in and out. We've got the expansion antennas here for that Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and 4G or 5G, depends on what kind of card you go with. So basically, any kind of I.O. you're looking for on a mini PC or a single board computer is here built in already. Now when it comes to the main specs, like I mentioned, this is using the Rock Chip 3588. It's an 8 core SOC. We've got 4 Cortex A76 cores and 4 Cortex A55 cores. Max clock up to 2.4 gigahertz. The GPU this SOC is utilizing is the Mali G610. It's a modern day GPU with Vulkan support. We've got 4 cores there because it's the MP4 version. On the unit we're going to be taking a look at in this video, we've got 8 gigabytes of RAM, but they offer three variants, 4, 8, 16. All of them are using LPDDR4 RAM. These mini PCs also have built-in eMMC storage, 16, 32, 64, or 128. But as you saw, we've got a ton of expansion from a micro SD card, M.2 SSDs, or SATA drives. And for the operating system, in this video we're taking a look at Station OS, which is based on Android 12, but they do offer a few different Linux variants, and if the interest is there, I can do a dedicated video showing off Linux running on this mini PC. But I want to jump right into it and show you what this thing can do. So this thing actually boots up pretty quickly. Now everything's installed on the internal eMMC, and with this one I have 64 gigabytes takes a second for the Bluetooth to enable once you get started up, but we've got several ways that we can control the operating system. 
from the uh, air mouse here, we've also got the air mouse functionality, or you could just use it as a remote. Uh, mouse and keyboard, we've got a wireless mouse and keyboard plugged right into one of the USB ports. Or my favorite way, using a game controller, like an Xbox controller connected over Bluetooth. Really easy to navigate the full operating system. You don't even need the remote if you've got a controller connected. So I did have one update for this operating system. We've got the update right on the main menu here. Really easy to get to those OTAs. We'll head over to settings. And from my display, I've got this set up for 4K 60 FPS. And one of the main claim to fames for the RK3588 is 8K 60 FPS playback. But unfortunately, I don't have an 8K display. We've got 4K 60 here, which still looks absolutely amazing. Unfortunately, at the time of making this video, no access to Google Play, but there is kind of an App Center built in, and this will actually allow you to go through and download things like Netflix, but what I've done is just download Aptoid, a third-party app market, that way I could get some games and everything installed on here. But the first thing I want to take a look at is some 4K video playback. So I've got two versions of YouTube installed. Now, the first one we're going to take a look at is the TV version, or the Android TV version. Works out great for these larger displays, but unfortunately, I can't go up to 4K in here for some odd reason. I can only go up to 1440p. So I opted to install YouTube Advanced, and right now we're set to 4K 60, but if you take a look at Stats for Nerds, it's still detecting 1080p false. So I'm not 100% sure if we're at a true 4K resolution. Now I know for sure that I have the video bitrate set to 4K 60 and HDR. I'll tell you what, I mean, it looks great here. Uh, we're not getting many drop frames at all. And in the past with the 3588, I've had really good luck with 4K 60 playback. This is super smooth, but there's not a 100% surefire way for me to tell if this is true 4K 60 right now that we're looking at. In terms of raw power, this is putting out the kind of performance that the Snapdragon 865 puts out. I've run Antutu here. We almost scored right there at 600,000, which, you know, for newer Android phones that you have in your pocket right now, isn't spectacular. But when it comes to these ARM-based mini PCs and single board computers, this score is insane. I mean, just to put it into perspective for you, the Amlogic S905X3, which you'll see in a lot of single board computers nowadays, scores on the high end around 68,000 in total. And with this, we're sitting right at the edge of 600,000. So the next thing I wanted to test was some native Android gaming. I got three games to test here. Unfortunately, since we don't have Google Play services, I couldn't get all of the games that I wanted to test, but I've got a few here and performance is really impressive. First up, we've got Asphalt 9 and I did install Micro G, so I do have Google Play services, but unfortunately it doesn't work with some applications. It still gives me issues with a few that I've tested. But this is one that I was able to get up and running. And as you can see here, I mean, this is running really well on that Mali GPU. Hopefully in the near future, they do add full Google Play support. That way we can basically download anything we want. Right now we're using those third party apps. But as you saw, Asphalt 9 ran outstandingly. So if you wanted to go over to some indie stuff like Dead Cells or Among Us, you're not gonna have any issues here. These are lighter, easier to run games and they work fine with this chipset. Now, one game that I always like to test on these Android devices or anything that I can install it on is Genshin Impact. It's definitely a much harder game to run, and unfortunately, we still don't have proper controller support in Android. And even third-party apps, I just couldn't get working with this setup that I have going right now. Usually, I can get a controller working with it, but I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I tried a few different third-party apps to get this to work, and I can get it semi-working, but I don't have full control over the character. So I opted to use a mouse and the on-screen touch points. Not a great way to play the game, but I still wanted to show the performance off because with a low-medium mix, it can run at 60 FPS. Every once in a while, we get a dip here and there. You might want to drop a few more of these settings down to low, but at Genshin Impact does work on the RK3588 quite well. Next thing I wanted to take a look at was a little bit of emulation. We're just going to go with PSP and PS2 for this video. Uh, Dreamcast 1440p, no problem at all. N64, really good performance. And I kind of wanted to save GameCube and Wii for my Linux video because I think we can get some really great performance over there also. But first up, we've got PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, 4X resolution, Vulcan back in, Amazing performance. Even the harder to emulate games like Chains of Olympus can do 2 to 3x on this system. But I'd say what was most impressive about this chip here is the PS2 performance. Now, of course, you're still going to run into some harder to emulate games that don't work very well at higher resolutions. But here we have Ether SX2, Vulcan Backend, 2x with Gran Turismo 4. 
There's a ton of games that'll be playable with a system like this, and even some of the easier to emulate stuff like Crash, Wrath of Cortex can go up to 4x with that Vulcan back in, but you're still gonna run into some problematic games like God of War 2. So here it is, Vulcan back in, I've got the unsafe preset on because this actually runs at about 45 with the safe preset on. I mean, it's not horribly bad, but personally, I would kind of skip these harder to emulate games if they're going to play like this right now. Overall performance with Station OS is great, and I kind of expected it to be. This is based on Android 12, and by the way, if you just want to install an AOSP version of Android 12 on this, they do offer an image. It's actually really easy to flash to the internal eMMC. Hopefully, they can add Google Play support or come up with an easy way to add Google Play support, because that would definitely make it more appealing to some people. But the way it sits right now, out of the box, it's totally de-Googled, and I know there's a few people out there that kind of like seeing this. I mean, you can do whatever you want to this, but keep in mind that some games are going to be limited without Google Play services. Next thing I want to do with this is install Linux. They've got a couple different variants up and running on the Arcade 3588, Arch, and Ubuntu. So let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd be interested in seeing. And if it is, let me know if you want to see Ubuntu or Arch running on this PC. But that's going to wrap it up for this first look. If you're interested in learning more about the Firefly boards or even Station OS, I will leave a few links in the description. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.